Hello, everyone. I'm Kyle. Uh, Kyle Van Sys. I'm the co-founder of a little startup called Cedar. Uh, we're focused on feasibility and early stage development for housing, trying to help it help it help developers and um, planners and designers get more homes built in the city where they should be built. Um, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're talk here to talk about PropTech. That's our first panel. Uh, and the first question that always comes up with PropTech is, what is PropTech? Uh, it's a question that I've spent the last year trying to answer. I'm not sure I have a good one, but uh, luckily we have a great panel today that's going to give us a really great answer. I uh, put together a few slides just to give you the most naive, most sort of uh, unnuanced definition of prop tech possible, which is that uh, if con tech is about constructing buildings, construction tech is about constructing buildings, prop tech is about maintaining buildings. Now, this is not accurate, but this is maybe the the kind of way in to start to think about this. Um, the reason that we're talking about prop tech in this panel and construction tech in the next panel um, is because this is a mode of investment that I think is quite new to the industry. And as Morali stated, it's, a, um, it's an approach to investment that's also very, very different. Um, historically, like we all, and we'll show this, we all love to talk and complain about how productivity has been flat in the construction industry in the post kind of World War II era. Uh, and I think there's a, a big reason for that in that the industry invests about half a percent of total revenue into R&D, right? And as you'll see, things are changing. Um, and so this panel is really gonna examine and the next panel as well, the construction tech panel, uh, what are the implications of that change in investment? But okay, yeah, so most, most unnuanced definition, a little bit more nuance. Um, in that on construction tech, we're actually talking about the processes and the procurement of materials for construction. There's debate about whether design and um, sort of like early stage planning all the way through to kind of, you know, turnkey, uh, you know, handing the building over if that's construction tech or not, or if design and planning is in, um, is in prop tech. Uh, but yeah, it's a very nuanced definition and differentiation between the two, and we'll let our panelists uh, further define that. But the the one thing that I I guess I wanted to um, sort of start start these two panels off with was the idea that you know if you if you so we're starting here in 2010. This is investment in uh, the real estate industry uh, by the VC community uh, since 2010. And if we extended this, you know, back two more decades, right, it would be kind of flat, right? It would be like maybe half a billion, a billion dollars a year for a long time. Uh, and Jenny, hopefully this is accurate. Uh, but it's been flat for a long time, right? And productivity has also been flat because, again, we've been investing about a half a percent a year uh, in R&D. So we all love to complain about this productivity curve, and it's very accurate, right? But now we have the VC community, uh, the investing community, uh, taking a very different approach to bringing money into the industry uh, to increase productivity, right? And so since 2010, we've seen this dramatic increase and things were a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit high in 2021, a little bit, market was a bit frothy, right? But um, if we just kind of revert to the mean, we would expect the VC community to dramatically change the way that uh, this industry thinks about investment in technology. Uh, and the question is, what does that mean? Does that mean that productivity is going to kind of maybe slightly trend upwards, right? Or are we going to see in the AEC space what we've seen in almost every other industry, which is this kind of, you know, long tail exponential growth that, you know, is driven by the outcome-based approach that VC takes? Um, and so again, I think, I hope our, I know our panel will really provide a lot of insight as to where they think this is going to go with all of this investment. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up, and I think Morali, like you, you uh, sort of spoke to this really beautifully, uh, but you know, the idea of, of change as being either evolution or revolution. Uh, my background is in architecture. I did a lot of the kind of geometric optimization that Morali referenced at Perkins and Will. I did it at SOM. And every project was a revolution, right? Every project was going to change the world. We did projects like this. This was a 
a sort of super lightweight, uh, concrete optimized uh, exposition center in Shanghai, did tons of projects like this. Every project again was gonna change the world. The problem with that is that we sort of started over each time, right? We would do these incredible projects. We would build these insane grasshopper scripts, right? That um, were not scalable at all. And then the project would be over, we'd hand it off in SDDD, and we would start over on the next one. And we would take some of the knowledge that we had, but for the most part, um, it was sort of a, a zero to one, zero to one process. With all of this investment from the VC community, I think we're gonna see a change from revolution in every project to evolution through platforms and products, right? I think this is like the most obvious thing that anyone could say, and many of you have been working on this, this concept for a long time. But again, I think this panel is a great opportunity. These two panels are great opportunities to talk about how investment in platforms and products in the AEC is really gonna drive that productivity growth that we've all been going to conferences for years talking about where where it is or isn't. So with that, I'll stop talking um, and I will introduce our panelists. You may notice a little bit of change uh, in the last couple of days with the panelists. Unfortunately, Nick from uh, Nick Lucius from the city of Chicago is unable to join us. Um, but don't worry, we have an amazing panel. It got even more amazing. Uh, Jenny Song is will be our first speaker. Uh, and she's, she's a principal, a principal with Navitas, Navitas Group, which, which is the leading uh, early stage, uh, growth stage venture capital firm in the AEC industry um, and for the built environment. Um, she leads investment teams with a special focus on housing, climate, and impact. And prior to Navitas, uh, she was a founder herself uh, and a broad foundation fellow. And she started her career as a consultant at Bain & Company here in Chicago. Um, our, second our second panelist, panelist will be Evo Van, Van Brooklyn. I think I, enough New, New York, York there, there. Evo. All right. uh, Evo is actually Dutch, but uh, anyway, he's a managing partner of the PropTech Connection, uh, which is based here in Chicago, but also uh, has uh, partners in Europe. Uh, he has an extensive global network. He's really looking at PropTech as an industry uh, globally. Um, and, and has, has been, been uh, a guest lecturer at MIT and Harvard. Harvard. Uh, our, third our third panelist, which is new, uh, is David Wiltz. Uh, he is, is the CEO and founder of Digital Master, Master Planning, Planning, DMP, which is a full life cycle management platform for real estate, which greatly improves the productivity of people and capital. Um, prior to that, he led Arab's Amer Arab America's digital consulting practice and was the global leader for digital smart buildings. And then finally, our fourth is Matt Herman. He is a senior vice president at WSP and is overseeing the properties and businesses or buildings business, uh, especially with a focus in the Midwest. And his work covers all aspects of the built environment, and he collaborates with architects, developers, higher education, and healthcare institutions, as well as public agencies, and works with WSP's other business lines to address complex issues in the built environment relating to energy, CO2, water, transportation, resiliency, policy, planning, and much more. So with that, I'll stop talking, and we'll let Jenny take it from here.